Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. Another episode of 30 Minute Sessions. This is season two, episode two, and I have two special guests on. I have Classified with Joel and I have G Nation. You can find both of the links down below and we're gonna have a fun, fun stream, fun recording for you guys tonight. Um, hopefully you guys get this in the morning. Joel had some breaking news that he wanted to bring up and we're gonna get to that. But first off, how is everybody, how is everybody doing tonight? Doing good, doing good. Had a nice quiet day trying to stay warm up here in frozen New York. Uh, temperature's like four degrees outside right now, so. It's cold, don't know how um, that feels. Hey, man, I'm alive. Any day above ground is a good day, so. Let's get it. I love it. Well, it brings us to our first topic. I just want you guys' thoughts real fast on the whole Joe Shane, the process of the interviews, what you guys liked about him, what you guys didn't like about him. And don't forget, guys, to hit that like button, subscribe to this video, and please go show these guys love too. Channels are down below. Whoever wants to answer first can give the answer. First, sorry. Uh, Go I just for it. to say thank you for having me on the 30 uh, minute session. Uh, it's been long overdue. Uh, I should have yes. been the first guest. <laughs> you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, thank you for having me. I man. love it. Absolutely. You guys make sure you subscribe to him. Thank you. Let's get it. Joe, you um, want to tackle this question first? Okay, thoughts on Joe Sh Shane's process. Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to learn to pronounce his name right. Shane, because I, every I'm everybody keeps name. messing it up. Um, Shane, yeah. Look, he's 42. He's never been a GM. He's going to have a learning curve. He's going to make mistakes. But, you know, when he said in his interview, he looked at us and said, don't worry, guys. I've already got the first four rounds of the draft figured out. Okay, that means to me that the guy works. He puts in the, the groundwork. He's always thinking ahead. He's looking towards the future, how to build better, how to get more talent, how to get, you know, the right players. And he went into that a little bit in his conference. Another thing that I, I, I really liked about, you know, Joe Shane, he, he gave me back a little bit of pride. He said in his interview, look, the Giants are an established foundation. They have titles. They are a one of the first founding football teams in the NFL. The Maras have held on to that team. The Maras are you know, are somebody that people want to work for, you know. But he also said that you have to learn how the Maras do things around here. So you know, he's going to have to learn how the organization runs. He's going to have to learn how to bring people in. And not only that, you know, who does he want for his underlings, for the people under him that he's, who does he have to trust right now in this organization? He doesn't have that one guy that he can trust. Yeah, he's got the Maras, but in the Tishes, but we, we know that there was a division there because Mara wanted to keep Judge, Tish wanted to clean house. Well, Tish won this time. Tish got to clean house. In comes Shane. So now Shane's got a lot on his plate right now. The Senior Bowl's coming up. The Combine's coming up. Free agency's coming up. He's not sure about his, his scouting staff. He, we're not even sure about a head coach right now. But it, it just seems like he hit the ground running because he wasn't even here a day. And he interviewed Day Bowl and he interviewed uh, the defensive coordinator for the Bills. Uh, th this guy's a forward thinker. He knew that if they won, we could still interview those guys. But if we hadn't have interviewed them, we would have had to have waited until they lost. And if that was the Super Bowl, we'd still be another three weeks down the road. Mm -hmm. So, look, this guy does have the foresight. I, I, I just I like a lot of the things that he said. There's a couple of things that I question. But right now I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust him. And I'm going to believe in his evaluations. But I'm not going to buy in like we did last year. I'm not going to let a guy sit up there on the podium and then get fired up about it. I, I just, I can't do it. Absolutely. G Nations, what's your thoughts on the whole process I, so far? I agree with a lot of what you said, but uh, I am going to get fired up and I'm going to say 11 and 6. I'm back on my bullshit already. Already. We don't even have a head coach yet, but I'm fired up about <laughs> the prospects, okay? I'm glad that Dan Quinn came out and said that he's staying with the Dallas Cowgirls because I didn't I, want anything. Good point. Dallas. 
Okay, yep. I'm very glad about that because as as I said on another stream, we hired a Dallas coach last time, and we see how that got fucking worked out for us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we're not gonna go down that road. No Dallas, nothing. All right, so I'm extremely proud about that. He hit on a lot of cues. He sang a lot of the greatest hits, uh, talking about the historical pride of the franchise, the four titles. Um, you know, how, how committed the Maris and the Tishes are to making this a winning team again. Um, he, you know, he said a lot of good things. And um, I'm confident in the people that he's selected to interview so far and the fact that he has been a forward thinker and has hit the ground running. He didn't fumble or nothing. He, he came in with a plan, and so far he's been executing step by step. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. I'm excited to see where it goes from here. I think Dabble is the guy. Um, rumors come out that Flores nailed his interview today um, and that there were some hard questions. In fact, Joe just brought that article out um, that uh, they asked him about relationships in Miami. And um, that was one of the concerns that was brought up on the stream we had the last, not last night, I believe, about his relationships. Um, Flores was a coach who switched offensive coordinators four times in three seasons. So is this guy hostile? Is he volatile? Is he arrogant? Is he controlling? Is he a micromanager? Is that something we need here right now? Um, Shane has a history with Dabble. They've built something in the past. Um, winning football, as we've just seen, uh, that game that went down to the wire between Kansas City and Buffalo. So um, I'm confident that the guy is is on a hot streak, if if nothing else, even if he's not a great GM right now, he's on a hot streak. He's the hot hand, so to speak. Right. So the Giants are going with the hot hand. We'll see how that works out. I like that. You guys made perfect points and excellent points. Um, obviously, I agree on a lot of the things that you guys said. And one thing I want to bring up, too, is I like his energy. I like just the way he comes off. He's not, he's not, he's not too serious. He's, he's, he's stroking the ball. He knows how to operate the media good. You know what I'm saying? Thinking that, you know, he's coming now to New York, which is number one when it comes to media and yeah, and you better get it right. You know what I'm saying? And I love it because not trying to diss on um, ghetto men, but ghetto men will make a joke and it'll only be funny to ghetto men. You know what I'm saying? So right. you're trying to be funny. And at least Joe yeah. Sean, he's not trying to be funny. It's just I like his personality so far, and I, he's a clean-cut dude, and I could see how the Giants would want to look at him. And obviously, a well-vetted candidate. They went through nine nine um, interviews to get him, and two two interviews with him, and several other candidates. But the long story short, they did a good job, and and he not only he not he not only uh, acts really confident, but he looks the part. And when you say that's the GM of the New York Giants. You know what I'm saying? He looks the point. To, to um, piggyback off of that, there was some comparisons. Mm -hmm. People were saying that he looked like Eli, or he, and I'm like, uh, no, he doesn't look yeah. like Eli. But I see what they're getting at. Mm -hmm. He's easy, laid back, even keel, like Eli. Yes. yes. And um, yes. I think that that will serve him well in his position as the GM of the New York Giants because Eli was, you know, he didn't let nothing bother him. Right. Well, facts. And that's 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 what I looked at it too. It's like I don't know him obviously. We don't know him, but he looks like someone that like if he yells at you, you really did something wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's <laughs> look to piggy up to piggyback off of you guys, mm -hmm. let's not forget he's a Parcells guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, he is that's a, a Parcells guy, up. so he yes, learned he under Parcells with scouting and he was with my, him at Miami, I believe. So I know, it was Oh, no. I love how that segment, and how that, um, how that reporter asked him that in that segment of that interview that he did. Yes, and, uh, I love that how you're explaining like coach will still call me after Monday night games and and, yes. and what I need to adjust in Buffalo. And I love the relationship that he had built from just getting people coffee, to right? Handing out tickets to right. working your way up and having this relationship with all of these. Hall of Fame coaches and, and right. future GMs and stuff like that. And he and, did learn some old school stuff, but he also mm -hmm. follows the new school. So he, he understands how to traverse from old school to new school and maybe get Mara and Tish into thinking new school. So, you know, he, yeah. he, cause he's gone through that. Well, he no, might be able to, 
I don't know if that was a pun that he did. Or if he was serious, he's all like, yeah, we still have magnets in the draft room. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, are you, that, are you that's the old the, school. Yeah, yeah. are you devoted to the media? We really do got no TVs in the draft room because that is a problem if you have no TVs right. in the draft room. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if that was like a media joke or if that was right. like he's, he's being serious. But I love it when he said, if we need to knock down a wall, we'll knock down a wall. I love that. and And I love it how, you know, a lot of the times, us as us as Giants fans, the media, we get so we get so frustrated how things are handled in the organization, and I love it how he's making uh, again he's making the point like, hey guys, like he, as long as as long as it's not something that has a has a, a background that's really bad, Mara and Tish is gonna approve most of my decisions. So it's up to me and and the head coach that we bring in. It's a partnership. I love that he keeps on saying that. It's not like it's my show. I'm going to want it. We're going to bring in this. We're going to bring in that. Gets us to our next question. Well, you know, let's also not remember he's already signed a guy that a lot of clubs wanted to sign that running back, and he's only 24 years old. I like it. So he's just making moves. So actions speak louder than words. Let's see what his actions are now because we've heard his words. Absolutely. Okay. Brings us to our next question. Who would you guys rather have, Brian Dable and Brian Flores? Like, there's a lot of talks out there. I'm going to let you guys get to it. But I I heard some talks about if Brian Dable comes here, he's he's thinking about recruiting uh, Don Rink Montendale as his head co- as his defensive coordinator. I just think that is fantastic. And um, I think Brian Flores is going to be an excellent coach in this league. But right now, just hearing what he's going to bring in, um, and what he's going to try to at least bring in if he is get hired. And um, like like what like what Brandon said in Buffalo, the GM in Buffalo, he opened up his press conference saying that I'm going to I'm going to miss my golf buddy. You know what I'm saying? I love the fact that Joe Shearn would have a relationship with Brian Dable and they did things being the assistant GM. They did a lot of things together. So. Mm-hmm. I just think that the development of Josh Allen, we have a young, we have a young quarterback that we need to focus on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, at least give a shot. But so for me, I'm leaning more Brian Dabble as the weeks go on. I, I first I started with Flores, but I'm leaving my Dabble. So I want to give you guys give you guys a chance to answer it. Take as long as you guys need. I, I'm with you. Um, I was heavy on the Flores train. Um, I did a draft with Flores as the coach. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, because simply Joe Judge was a first time head coach, though I liked him, it didn't work out. Uh, Pat Shermer, though I liked him, didn't work out. McAdoo, didn't work out. So um, I wanted somebody who's built a program before. That's why when the rumors came out about Harbaugh, I was amped. Or Sean Payton, yes, let's go. So when they said the only other head coach that was available was Flores, as far as guys who have built programs before, I was on the Flores train. But having discussions and hearing the stuff that's been coming out, and Pat brought up some good points um, in the conversation that we had the other night. If Flores is the guy, who is the offensive coordinator? Because we all know Flores is a defensive-minded guy. and his offense has been lackluster to say the least where he's been. So, um, and knowing that Mara came out and said, we're not trading for Deshaun Watson and knowing that Flores. Just put that rumor to rest. I love that. He's a guy who wants Watson, you know, would that even be a probability anymore? So, you know, I, I believe that Brian Dabble is the favorite. I believe he's the front runner for the job. Um, and I believe that they already know that they're just interviewing other guys to build the rest of the team because of the senior bowl and all the upcoming events. So um, we broke the news that Shane had already become the GM, you know, thanks to Joe finding something on Giants Wire, I think it was. ESPN. Um, on ESPN, that's right. ESPN Transaction Wire, to be exact. Yep. So. Um, we already know that they like to do things behind the scenes and, and dot their I's and cross their T's before they release the information. So it's not unlikely or unprobable that he's already the head coach and they're just shoring up the ends and getting the DC and all that stuff worked out. So 
I think Dabble's going to be the guy. I would prefer Dabble at this point because at least we know he has an offense and he has a history with um, Patrick Graham. So perhaps Patrick Graham could stay on his D.C. I mean, who knows? Or he can bring Wink Markendale in, you know. So it, uh, the probability and possibilities are are better with Dabble. I, I agree. And, you know, you got Pat Leonard out there who's writing that Dabble is the favorite to be the Miami coach. Well, here's the thing. Number one, Pat Leonard is a beat writer. Number two, he has to get views. Number three, he really doesn't need a source. He can just say, I have a source. I have an unnamed source. I don't have to disclose this source. And it could be his invisible partner for all we know. All right. If Dabble was the main guy to be in Miami, don't you think they would have finalized the contract by now? Do you really think Dabble wants to go to Miami and face Josh Allen twice a year, face Mac Jones twice a year? Well, let's look at that. You know, does he really want to face his old ball club twice a year? Yeah, okay, well, the weather's a little bit better, but when you're in New York and you win a Super Bowl in New York, all right, you're set for life. If you go to Miami and win a Super Bowl, you're a hero for a year. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it, it is what it is. I mean, New York's the media capital of the world. Miami is the nightclub life of the world. Can so, I pause so, you real fast? Can I pause yep. you real fast? One thing I liked about Joe Shane is I liked his confidence. He said, not to not to get back on subject, but he said, I... He said, like, he didn't obviously have 32 teams, but he put himself out there. He's like, I had 32 teams, and, and when, when the New York Giants call, you answer. And once I got off that phone or something, he was he told his wife, I want that job. Right. Just, uh, the prestigious of the franchise. And I'll let you right. Know. Yeah, that's just it. You think, Deb, if, if, if Shane understands the prestige of being on this franchise, mm. you know, do you, don't you think that Dabble has that? Now, if we get, oh man, I, if we get Flores, job. think about it. He knows well, Bill Parcells, right? Do Bill you, Parcells won a Super Bowl here, two, right? So he's probably heard stories from Bill from the tuna. Yes, how great! Yes, how great it is to work here, right? Yes, he sits down with the Duke Junior, right? Mm -hmm. John Mara, Wellington Mara's son. He interviews with them face to face. He's like well, a kid in the candy store. Yes, right? yes. Right? He felt that energy too at his interview and at his. It's the same reason team. that Patrick Graham said, "I don't want to interview for that job. I'm. This is my dream job, defensive coordinator of the New York Giants, because that. he learned all his football from New York guys." Well, if you guys want Flores, do you really want Bill O'Brien here as your OC? Because that's chances are of what's going to happen. Because his name has been popping up with Flores a lot. It's in yeah. a lot of the articles. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like you said, that could be clickbait because this is a media-driven It is. And that, because it, of the fact that Mara came out and said, we're not trading for Deshaun Watson. Exactly. So they got to find something else. So he, he's got to find a way to get his article read so that he doesn't lose prestige. You know, uh, if, I, if I was in, in his shoes, I, I don't know. I'm a different person. I can't do that crap. You know, I, 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 I would try to find another angle or something else to write about, but that's me. Of course, we're going to find out about me later on in life as a YouTube creator. Just watch me grow. That's so you'll see how, see how, yeah. I'm confident. I think this is the right move. As much as I thought Joe Judge should get another chance. Yep. Uh, I think that they're doing it right this time. I think that the cleaning house and the hiring of Shane, um, and I believe he has a plan for the guys he's bringing in. And I think it just feels right this time. For it some does. reason, it just feels right. Back I'm not in 2000 over and no speech or no lineup and right. punch you in the nose for 60 minutes. I'm not, if, you know, he didn't hook line. Have you heard me. us, Lou, have you heard us getting clowned by the other teams in the NFC East like we usually do? No. no. Yeah, has it's has it's you heard any different. chirping? Yeah, have you heard it? Different. They're yeah. nervous. Yeah. Well, just the whole the whole off season grab and interviews we had in 2016, 17, it's it's three giants people and one one guy that like who? Um right. a college coach. Well no, no, sorry, no, sorry, for GM. I'm sorry. Who, who, who's this guy? Well. You know, and then to, to 2022, where we have nine fully vetted, 
like 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 GMs. guys yeah. that like if you don't yeah, even look yeah. at one of them nine and be like, why is he on the list? All yeah. nine was worthy candidates. My shit hit different when it's so yeah. That's right. That's right. Make sure you take the time to sub up to both of these content creators on screen. Link will be down below, and we'll move on to our final topic of the show. I want both of you guys to just kind of play GM. What free agents would you guys bring in? I like you guys are gonna get super technical. I'm not gonna you guys to tell you guys like break down the salary cap situation if you want to. You're more than welcome to. But just who? What free agents would you bring after? Bring in? Would you? Would you be after? Who would you draft at seven, at five? Would you trade back? Just play GM. Whoever wants to go first can go first. Go ahead, Lil. Um, personally, I don't want a quarterback. I'm glad that Mara came out and said, we've done everything to mess Daniel Jones up that we possibly could. I feel like he's been watching my streams. I've been saying that for months. Um, that we set Daniel Jones up to fail. We never got to see what we really had in him because he's never had an O-line and we did Barkley a disservice as well for the very same reason. So I've been saying that for a while. So I'm glad that he chose to come out and tackle that from the gate. So we know it's time to rebuild the O-line and that's the focus, right? So to me, I would get the best available tackle at five. I like it. which we did a breakdown on. It would be Quanu because he's the more mobile. And if Dabble is the guy, he's going to use that line to move and pull. And, <clears throat> and you, you want the mobile tackle. So I would want a Kemma Quanu at five. I would be willing to trade back the seventh overall pick to say between nine and 12. Okay. Just so I can get a first round draft pick in the following draft and still get a good offensive lineman or possibly an edge rusher, right? And then with the third round pick, I mean, second round pick, which I believe is second round would be 36 that we're picking, right? I think 36, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, so I would take a Kemba Kwanu at five, trade back to possibly nine or 12, somewhere in between there, and uh, – Go for like a um, Devontae Wyatt or a, he's a defensive tackle. Or for an edge rusher, I would go, um, say we're picking at 12, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe Ojabo or Christian Harrison. Christian Harris, right? Or uh, N'Kobe Dean at 12 wouldn't mm -hmm. be bad, right? I like that. And then with the number 36 pick, I would get um, – I would go for a Zion Johnson out of Boston College. His name's being talked about more and more. I keep on hearing the Zion Johnson kid. I have yeah. to go look him up. And uh, possibly with that trade back, you would also get a second-round pick this year and a first-round pick next season. So I would use that second-round pick to get another offensive lineman in a Thayer Munford or a Zion Nelson or uh, – you know, just some guys to rebuild this offensive line. I love and, it. And just with, with two rounds, I've already addressed all the offensive line yep. and an edge rusher. So absolutely, you know. which which is probably our biggest need on the team. Well, I I've been looking at the free agent interior linemen, and I do like Lou's thesis of what he wants. Like, sorry guys, my internet yeah. is bugging yeah. out right now. Never fails. We can hear you though. What, what are you smiling about down there? Your thesis? You didn't? You didn't like that? Hey man. No, I was impressed. Yeah. I was like, okay. Jordan. Um, I I like. I didn't know about you, folks. I I I, <laughs> sorry, I, sorry. <laughs> I like what he went with. Okay, a Quanu, I really I like. like it too. I would not mind mm -hmm. him at five. Okay, I wouldn't mind Karlofsis. I wouldn't mind Nicobe Dean. To tell you the God's honest truth, if that corner from LSU is there, 
because if we cut Bradbury, we might need a corner. Okay, if he if if this guy's going to go BPA at seven, and Stingley still on the board, that is Stingley, right? With LSU, the corner. I think so. Yeah. I think so. But yeah. let's say we get a center in free agency, and the one I got pulled up right here is Ryan Jensen from the Chargers. He's going to get about $10 million a year. He's one of the top guys. He's 13th out of 39 with PFF grade. Okay, so he's he's right up there. Um, I think he could be one of the guys that maybe we look at. Um, you know, Lakeland Tomlinson, he's only going to ask for, he's going to get maybe $9 million a year. Um. Uh, he only uh, Tomlinson surrendered a quarterback pressure on 3.8% of pass rushing snaps, the 16th best mark among guards with at least 200 snaps on the season. Okay. So, you, so, so now we spent 19 million and we got a good center. We got a good guard, you know? Okay. So now we can use our second round pick, maybe get a guard. If we go Equanu, Carlosis or go Equanu, Nicobe Dean or, or however they want to do it. But there are going to be guys on the interior that are pretty good. Uh, Connor Williams, he's a little older, but his name is. You know, he was a, he was a, well, no, actually, this guy was a top 50 pick in the 2018 NFL draft and a full time starter at left guard right out of the gate in week one in his rookie season. He's gotten better each season. You know, pass blocking rating was 71.4. Run blocking was 71.6 through week 13. You know, yeah, he had a PFF grade among guards since 2020 of 94.9. He's only going to be about a $7 million a year guy. So, look, we could get three really good guys. All right, so they are out there. And I'm expecting that's what Shane and the GM are going to do is look at guys like this. Bring these guys in because they are going to, I don't know if all these guys are going to hit, but there are some. Now I'll probably go into deeper with that because me and Pat are going to do a breakdown on the interior lineman here soon. So I don't want to give too much away, but we got my buddy here, Zion. I want to make sure he gets some good info. So, you know, make sure you check out. We're going to have another video dropping on this. Yes, absolutely. But I just want to throw a couple names out there and price tags. So if we have $50 million, so maybe 27, 28 million of it, okay, goes, but we can reduce that because if we give them the most of it at the beginning on a signing bonus, and then they only hit the cap for seven mil, There's you know, if we, six it. mil, right, right. We fly, that's why Abrams, Abrams what? was good at doing that. Negative 1.1 million coming into last year. The, yeah, we have uh, 300,000 right now. So, you know, yeah. they're going to get rid of guys. They're going to get restructures. Just they're going to. I don't want to move a ton of money back, but I would rather give, you know, give these guys a three-year deal, front load that friggin' thing so into a signing bonus so they're not hitting the cap too high. But you're going to get some guys in here that at least at Barkley and Jones, I mean, the guys that I named got really good PFF grades. I know people don't go with PFF, but that frees you up in the draft so that if you come into the second round, Okay, let's say one of these guys falls to 25, 26. Well, yeah, God, what if Linderbaum falls to 25 or 26? Oh, Linderbaum would probably fall to like 16. Well, I'm just saying, Lou, what if what if Linderbaum fell to 25th? You take your second round pick, you move up, you grab him. But because you got these guys in free agency that's not costing you $20 million each, you know, and you still have some free agent cab room. So now you can go up there and get Linderbaum because you don't have to worry about keeping your second round draft pick to get somebody. So you package a second and a fourth or a second and a third, whatever, move up, grab him. You know, that, that that's where this draft could go because we know the bills have moved up to grab guys, but they've also let the draft come to them. So this is a give and take. If the guy is there, they think someone's going to jump him. They're going to go up and get him. Yeah. You know, and then we get some death pieces here on the interior line or a tackle or, you know, we get a linebacker in the third, get a tight end in the third, get a running back in the fourth, you know, get a wide receiver in the fifth. There's going to be guys that, that are up and down. What if we got Mechie in the fourth? Oh, you know, so yeah, much. he's coming off of an injury, but, you know, so, so with this offensive line with picks five and seven, 
look, I'm not even going to be mad if they trade one of those picks. Let's say they no, do Mitchie, trade five. If we got yeah. Mechie in the fourth or fifth round, I wouldn't be mad. But right. trying to get him in the second or, That's a mistake. Like that or third, I'd be pissed. He right. blew his ACL. Right, mm-hmm. but if we get a team that's offering us, you know, not that good of a deal as seven, but we got another team that's going to come up there and say, yeah, I'll offer you this for five, and it's like two firsts, a second, a third. You know, well, you know what? Trade the fifth pick. Yes. Because he's going to need capital. This guy is going to build through the draft. Look for, yes. Yes. for Shane to get draft picks. Look for him yes. to acquire future assets. And that's I'll bet what you I want we go because next I'm tired year. of spending a buttload on free agents yeah. to come he's, here and wet the damn He bed. even said he he's said not going to buy big free agents. We, so the guys, we want to develop our players from within. Right. So the guys that I named gives him a three year plan to get guys in here to build up the talent. And, the and good then he, thing once too he built. Is go ahead. Most of our players are already young. So the right. oldest players we have are 27 years old. Right. So. This is a young team. and right in the prime of their career. This, this draft is going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy for Giants fans because our emotions are going to be, whoo-hoo, guarantee it. Absolutely. Three. And that's why you guys got to stay locked in on all these guys' amazing channels. We're going to bring you coverage throughout the whole year. We're building something really big, guys. So hopefully you guys can support everybody on here. I just want to ask you guys any final words before we get out of here. Go Giants! 11 and 6, back on my bullshit. Subscribe to Zion. Subscribe to Joe. And subscribe to yours truly. Yes. Absolutely. Y'all have a good day or night wherever you're watching this. And let's get it, Giants for life. Please. Sub to the channels below.